he's here for the, the big shows and he's already got a big one underneath his belt and I, I can't wait to see what he's gonna be like in the Tour de France. I will not because the police won't let me into the country if I look like this. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> the only way to keep this guy chill is to keep him at home because you put a number on his back and he's gonna go he's he's gonna go for all the marbles every time. But Tade, can anybody beat him in the field of the Giro Christian? I don't think so. I think it's a race for second and third, maybe. <laughs>
would have taken, but maybe just not quite there emotionally in the tour of Rumandy for Juan Ayuso. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm glad you brought up Bass Country because he's one of the youngest, if not the youngest ever to win one of the big six tours or seven tours that they have. So that was already big. And but I was surprised though still. I mean, I, I think so much of him as a bike racer and what he did in the time trial in the wet and how strong he was there. And then not to be able to back it up. I was I was surprised. I really was. Um, but again, like you said, he had a massive win just a week and a half before at Bass Country, a little bit before that. So whatever. He he he's here for the the big shows and he's already got a big one underneath his belt. And I, I can't wait to see what he's gonna be like in the Tour de France. I absolutely agree with that. Um, speaking of the Tour de France, one of the favorites theoretically will be Tari Pogaccia. If we move uh, on to the Giro d'Italia that's about to start, Tade, for my mind, has got to be the number one favorite. And I don't see anybody <laughs> currently in cycling beating the way he's riding so far this year in the Tour of Italy and not as mountainous as it has been. We'll get into the course in a little bit, but Tade. Can anybody beat him in the field of the Giro Christian? I don't think so. I think it's no. a race for second and third, maybe. <laughs> no, Podium it, it definitely... up for grabs, but the win, come on. Yeah. Well, real quick before, because I, I forgot to bring it up, and that's on me. We have to re- say amazing time trial, though, by the two Americans, Brandon McNulty. Oh, yes, sorry. Field. Yes, really, absolutely. Really close. Really close there. I mean, Brandon, being able to, you text me right away, actually during the race, you're like, oh, these these guys got it. And especially with the rain came in, Brandon got the race under dry roads entirely. Magnus had a mixed bag, I believe. So he had some times where he was in, in the rain. So it was impressive that he was only 10 seconds or so behind. Um, but to be able to turn it on, like when you're in the Gruppetto one day and you're kind of like whatever, and then just be able to flip of a switch, go from the winning mentality again, I mean, Brandon continues to really have the best season, bar none, that he's ever had. So it, he was originally he was supposed to do the Giro d'Italia as well, um, right. being a teammate of, of Tade. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen there, see what if he's going to do the Tour de France. But back to Tade. I just had to had to pay those boys off because they deserve it. Thank you. Uh, yes, absolutely. They, I don't see anyone coming close just to you. I, nowhere near. I mean, he's going to have to take a, a wrong turn to Albuquerque for anyone to, <laughs> to, to contend, right? I mean, there's no way. So, I mean, I put some uh, of the guys down on paper that I think could be up there in the podium. Ben O'Connor. Yeah. Bardet. Yeah. G. Thomas. But I, you know, those are the kind of guys I, I think that they're all riding well enough to be up there. But I don't think it's that strong. If I'm looking at the strong for GC guys, not as strong as the sprinters. The sprinters are strong. Oh, the sprint sprint field right. is, is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and, you know, Olaf Coy, Tim Relier, Fabio Jakobsen, yeah. Jonathan Milan, Caleb. See if yeah. Caleb could get back to his winning ways. Caden Groves, Phil Bajas. Uh it'd be fun to see Luke Lemperdi, 21 year old yeah. American rider on Quick Step. So that'd be fun to watch. Uh, but yeah, I think the most of the focus is going to be on the sprint train. But what I want to talk about, Bob, is is this a great opportunity for Tade to do the double? And I, I'm mm-hmm. starting to really lean there quite quickly. I, I think that this is an, a great, great opportunity with the lack of Jonas most likely being at the Tour, yeah. Tour de France. Um, I, I think that he could definitely do it. It's just a matter of how he's going to do it. And can he keep those guns in his holsters? Like you you brought it up <laughs> many times. The only way to keep this guy chill is to keep him at home because you put a number <laughs> on his back and he's going to go <laughs> – He's, he's going to go for all the marbles every time. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a sprint. It doesn't matter if it, they're playing dominoes on the team bus. <laughs> if, he, if it's a race, he's going to race no matter what, which is great for us to see. But I'm sure for the management, when they have other objectives, perhaps that Tade doesn't have how to keep him, uh, especially in the Tour of Italy. I think it's his first participation, right? And I would imagine he's going to go for everything he has a chance to do so. Yeah, I was I was speaking with Larry Weirboss this morning. Um, he's going to be going to do the Giro. I think he said his sixth Giro. Um, just talking about the route in general and how sharp it is right from the beginning. Real tricky, very similar to Milan Torino on the, the hillier version of it, Bob. Yeah. And then this, the second day, Europa. I mean, so yeah. there's a very good chance that Tade could have up to a minute lead, you know, if everything goes, if he has a kind of form in, in 
like Liege best on Liege, for example. Yeah. And then after that, you got you got two time trials, stage seven, stage fourteen, where you could easily take thirty seconds a piece. So yep. it's a it's set up really well for him to play defense. Of course, having the jersey for twenty days is not going to be easy. Um, but if he if he can, you know, not go for eighteen stage wins. You know, and I think he's got a great chance or, or I mean, you could, you could cherry pick them, right? Like you can, yes. you don't, you just don't have to go for the ADK bombs and maybe yes. that won't take as much out of your body. Yeah. That's probably for the double, not since 1998 has it been accomplished. Marco Pantani was the last one to do so. Um, Tour de France, by the way, starts a stage in his hometown, stage number two and finishes just down the coast in Rimini, stage number one. Um, is there any chance that Tade will be able to just win the Giro, not destroy everybody, and, like you said, Christian, have a better chance at perhaps winning the Giro Tour double? It's been a long, long time. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I think that this is a great opportunity for him. I, I think... Honestly, even if he does go crazy, which he most likely will, and I don't want him to change as a person. That's why, like you said, that's why we love him as a bike racer. There's no reason that he's attacking with the yellow jersey when he was winning that. And, but that was the first time we've seen that in decades, right? We hadn't seen that. In yeah. Really? When's the last time you saw the yellow jersey attacking with no reason to attack with in the closing <laughs> stages? So I don't want him to change. But that said, I would love to see someone trying to go for the double who, who truly has a chance at it this year. At the, at the beginning of the year, I, I thought it was a little bit more of avoidance and having a little bit of mm -hmm. uh, uh, a built-in excuse, maybe, with Jonas going head-to-head. -head. Okay. If you already won the Giro, second place isn't so bad. Get some stage wins, make everyone happy. And if I win, it's a win-win, right? Um, yeah. Now, I think things have changed dramatically over the last couple of weeks. Um, yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Regardless, I, even, even if he wins... Look, there's a good possibility he could, he could win like eight stages. It's a very high probability, <laughs> right? I mean, it's true. He could yeah. win. He could win. He could win the climbers. He could win the points. He could win. He could win a lot. So, uh, it, I, it's gonna be fun to watch. It's not as hard of a race, I believe. I read yes. that it was eleven thousand less meters, a thousand yep. meters less climbing than last year. So that's got to be easier. Feet. Well. Yeah, thirty-three. To, I mean, that's a lot. And then you also yeah, think of. Um, uh, five weeks separation from the finish of the Giro to the Tour de yeah. France. And, you know, I, I did the, my best year ever, Bob, in the Tour was the 08. And we got the, the pink jersey at the beginning of the, of the race. And I chased and I lost the second stage in Sicily. And I chased that for almost two weeks. And then the difference between myself and Ted, well, there's a thousand differences. He's a, 10 times a bike rate as, as mine. But, I didn't, I was just in the group for the last week. And then we cherry picked the, the time trials, get a couple of top fives and go home. And, but after that, we went straight to altitude, went, took a car straight to San Moritz, the whole team did training camp up there with the families and then went to the Tour de France. And it was incredible, you know, how well that worked. If you're happy, everything's working properly. Um, but the biggest difference is that I wasn't on my hands and knees and I wasn't going for the juggler stressed out. I was just, just finishing the race, really, mm -hmm. with Taddy going for yeah. the win. But if he has a, a big lead, maybe it wouldn't be. It doesn't seem like he's stressed regardless, even when he's going for the win. So I don't know. I, I think that's <laughs> true. I, I, I look, I, I really think that this is, this could be a special year. And it's like you said, yeah. since 90, 98 with Pantani, he tried to do it again in, in 99. Obviously, we know what happened there. Um, so yeah, and since then, who, who's really, I mean, Lance never tried. He never even thought of it. He just went for the tour every year. Uh, mm -hmm. Alberto, I think, might have. 90, yeah. 2008 that year, he didn't do the Tour yeah. de France where he won the Giro. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, going back to the comparisons with Eddie Merckx for Teddy yeah. Pogacin. And, and he just wants to win everything. And this year, <laughs> so far, it's just been absolutely astounding. I don't think the momentum is going to slow down until the at least the end of the Giro, and maybe not till the end of the Tour de France, which would be history in the making. So I cannot wait to see Tade tearing the Giro apart. That's going to be really fun. Garen Thomas might uh, not be <laughs> as enthusiastic, or even TJ Van Garderen. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, but 
It'll be interesting. Ben O'Connor, I'm I'm curious to see how he will do. I want him to be up there in the GC. He has the talent to do so, and it's just been a couple of rough seasons, it seems like, for Ben O'Connor. But that team has completely changed as well, and I was, I should have said something while we are talking about Romandy. You know, they had two stage wins there, same yeah. rider, Doreen yeah. Gordon. I mean, that was impressive. Yeah. First and last Very stage. Impressive. Yeah. And that whole, it's not just him, it's an entire team. They've had 12 wins, the earliest they've ever had 12 wins on that team, well, to date. So yeah. it's a completely different squad. They had a, a inflow of a lot more cash with the Kathleen coming on as the title mm-hmm. sponsor, change yeah. bikes, their own own bike, which Larry said he absolutely loves as well. Um, he says just a, says like it's, it doesn't look like anything special, but it just the little things all put together made made the difference. So he feels like it's a completely different squad. And they come into races, not just the race, the races, but actually have a game plan and not go for three different leaders, but go just for Ben O'Connor. So it's going to be interesting to see how those guys, well, first of all, they just need to get through the weekend because this race is starting off hard. And just like the Tour de France, where you mentioned earlier, starting in, in Tuscany, going to Rimini the first day with 13,000 feet of climbing. <laughs> you don't just get to ease into Grand Tours anymore, no. do you, buddy? There's no, no prologue and little sprint stage. No, no you better no. be sharp. Sharp as a tack immediately from the jump. Absolutely. And the sprinters are going to have to wait a couple of days to get there for a chance. But I want to give you a name, Tobias Andreasen from the DSM squad. I think he's going to be really fast. He won three stages in the Tour of Turkey recently. I think he'll be up there. But Tim Lear, having a great year, might be the top sprinter to reckon with. Yeah. And Olaf Koy as well. I mean, Tim Lear is a different person this year. He is definitely sharp. Um but Olaf, yeah, I feel with him and his teammates, I think that's going to be interesting to see Olaf. He really solidify himself as as a top dog in this Giro. I mean, I, I think I think he can. But Merlier is, like you said, he's, he's chirping. Bobby Jakobsen, another question mark yeah. I have there. Phil Bajas, Caden Groves, of course. Um, but really, if I'm looking at all the sprinters, the person who needs to start winning again, Caleb. Caleb Ewan. I would, I would love to Caleb see Ewan. him really start to get that swagger back, get the confidence back with a new team. So that, that would be interesting to see him start winning back with Jayco Alula. So that, that's, that's a big one. He had, he had some rough times and that's putting it lightly with Lotto. I mean, it was, no one was happy. Yes. The front office, office wasn't happy. Obviously Caleb was not happy. So uh, hopefully he's has a nice rebirth and comes up with some W's. Yeah, absolutely. Talking of W's, Allison Jackson won the stage in the women's tour of Spain today, big sprint finish. And, uh, maybe the most thrilled stage winner <laughs> I've seen in a long time. It was great to see her. She won Perry Roubaix last spring, big win there. But today in the Tour of Spain, it's just wonderful to see her celebration. <laughs> Anybody that's not seen that has got to check out the highlights on NBC of Allison Jackson's win for the EF squad. Big win in the Women's Tour of Spain, but uh, uh. Team time trial, uh, interesting. Lidl Trek got the win there. Gaia Realini, who will be a GC contender, uh, took over the first race leader's jersey. Um, That went over to Blanca Voss, but watching Allison Jackson win the sprint was pretty fun. It's going to be a great women's tour of Spain the rest of the week, Christian. Yeah, eight stages. Hardest stage I looked into a little bit deeper this morning, five, six, and eight. So they have some easier stages, hopefully better weather. Um, and before that finish with Allison coming across the line first, it was crazy. I don't know if you get to see all, yeah. see all of that, Bob, but there are a lot of crashes, yeah. unfortunately, right at the yeah. 3K to go banner. And then the next, by the time they caught back up, next roundabout, there was people going everywhere. Yeah. So it, it was chaotic. And then, of course, you have, you have to mention Kristen Faulkner. She was at the right place, right time, got yeah. to the front with it being as chaotic as it was. Uh, it did a, a silly lead out for at least 500 some meters. And yeah. Allison Jackson never never had to fight for anyone. So, but yes, the 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 celebration was insane. I had to go and rewind it myself. I was like, <laughs> what, "What what just happened?" Because I kind of walked away after, and I walked back in. I was like, "I, I got to watch this again." Uh, yeah, she, she lost it, so it was really cool. And I, I think that she could be in the run for maybe getting the jerseys. Eight seconds behind. Yeah. Yep, she has some time. And like we said, some stages before it gets pretty rough. Um, but this is the women's. Walter again, the men's Walter later in the year. Bob and I will be calling yeah. that into September. Um, have you did you race the Walter in the spring, Bob? Were you, 
I, I went to Mallorca where it was to start, um, but we were called off the island. <laughs> uh, that's a whole other story for a different time. But let's talk about the women's GC. Demi Vollering is going to be tough to yeah. beat in the Vuelta, which is one of the few races she's never won in her career. I'm sure she'll be fired up to win the Vuelta. A little bit of team drama with Vollering, but uh, I don't. I, I, she's gotten the same level as Tade as far as favorites go for this stage race, it seems to me. Yeah, she she's one of the people, especially when we're watching Flesh alone, where she just pretty much rode to the front the entire way and then got smoked to the finish line. I, I don't know what's necessarily going on on that team and how happy she is and teammates and vice versa. Uh, but it, it'll be interesting. Class, there's zero doubt. No one's going to question. She has class oozing out of her pores. So, like you're right, comparing the two of Tade and Demi together, yeah, pretty 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 equal in dominance. Um, for the last two years, but we'll see, Bobby. I mean, she hasn't really been firing, nothing like she was last year. She's been good, but she hasn't been incredible like she was. Um, uh, to, and the way they race today, man, I, I love the way that this sport continues to evolve and how quickly it has evolved and the level of fitness. And what used to be five riders, and it was 10, and it was 20. Now, now there's a lot more women who could all race at the front, just, just like we've seen and the progression, the men's race, same thing goes with the women's right now. So it's going to be cool to see what happens yeah, when it gets absolutely. going, gets rough in stages five, six, and eight. Uh, Guy Arialini comes to mind, Elisa Longo Burghini, Cassia Niwi Adoma also. So it's going to be a great women's tour of Spain. What else we got, Bob? What else we got? Uh, I, you know what to- I want to ask you about is a good friend of yours, not in the Giro, not going to be contending for the sprint wins, Mark Cavendish, and how that. Um, plays into, you know, what he's like last objective, winning one more stage in the Tour de France to have the outright record in stage wins. So do you think it's a good idea that Cav is not in the Giro or how would have you played it? I mean, he knows himself as well as anybody, his team also, obviously, but uh, I'm going to miss seeing, not seeing him in those sprints in the Giro. Yeah. Cav is a guy who absolutely loves to race his bike. It, it's not a penance to him to send him to a race. He loves being out on the road. He loves just the passion of pinning the number on. Um, he has the most organized suitcase you've ever seen, Bobby. He's the antithesis <laughs> of, of, of myself. Um, so, so he's a road warrior. And he's, he's always done it. He's always been one of the riders who's raced the most. And so I was surprised uh, as I, I'm, a, I'm a ex, a expecting you you're surprised the reason why you asked that question, yeah. that he wasn't there. And he's usually a guy who needs that heavy load um, to perform at the highest level. And he was, he was flying before he broke his collarbone at the Tour de France last year, lo- yeah. winning that last stage, obviously yes. helped by not, not his teammate, but his, his buddy, Garrett Thomas and that beautiful yes. lead out. But uh, yeah, I so I'm, I'm surprised I'm with you, dude. I'm definitely surprised that he, he's not doing the Giro. Um, obviously they have the reasons he's got a great trainer. I think he's in Greece right now with his trainer doing some, some training after the tour of Turkey. Um, but yeah, he's, Look, at Cavs a guy. He knows his body. He, more importantly, he knows how he responds, and especially what he's a gamer. And if you have a massive objective for him, and you put it in front of him, he's going to be ready at the right time and place. And that means he's going to be ready to go in Tuscany when the when the Tour de France starts. How he goes about doing that is a different way every year. Um, we we saw the same thing happen just a few years ago when he didn't get brought back on Quick Step, where he was flying, winning the national championships there. So. I would have liked to see him just like you, you know, we would like to see the progression because we can't tell what's necessarily going on at a training camp. Um, but I still have faith in him 100% that he's going to be ready to go at the tour. But does that mean he breaks the record Christian in your estimation? Does he get a stage win at the tour de France this, this summer on the record? hundred yeah. percent official. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I, I've been burned. We, you've been burned. Everyone's been burned when you second yes. guess that guy. So we've all learned. So no one says, no, it's, I mean, you can't say you cannot write him off. And Absolutely. it was so close. And it was in Bordeaux when he, his chain skipped there, right. how close he was there. And the next day he broke his collarbone and it was a, it was a sad state of affair. So, um, Cav elevates everyone to the top of the game. When you bring a true champion like that, he's a guy that you can never count out. He's so wily. He he has a photographic memory when he does a sprint. He can remember and recall everything that happened, how many pedal strokes it was, and how big the gap was. 
the subtleties that he does of just making space for himself at all times while in a hectic group sprint and to be able to be cool at the same time. Um, yeah. But racecraft is one thing and knowing how to do it and the legs are a different one. So he's not getting any younger. It's not going to be easy. No. He's got a strong team. He's got the best lead out man in the world. That's been by his side of many victories with Markov. So yeah, he, I, I'm never going to say no. No way. I, I've learned my lesson. I will never write this man off. Alexander Vinokurov is the team manager. Um, I think they have all their eggs in one basket. Christian, does that put extra pressure on Cav? <laughs> no. I mean, because Vino, that's why Cavs liked his, his time with Astana as much as he has. Because Vino hasn't put any pressure on him. He's like, hey, here's a contract. We'd love to have you. You bring so much to the team just being here let alone your wins. If if the wins come, that's great. If not, just give us, give us your best. And what Vino saw last year and how much effort he put into it and really just the appreciation of the public for what he was doing at his age and, and going for that ultimate record, um, which, you know, if you ask him, Eddie is, you know, tied with him. So it, it, you have to go <laughs> both sides, you know, who, who, who really has it? Who's tied with who? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think Vino puts that much pressure on him. No, I don't. What well, they're gonna, they're gonna not be in the world tour. It would be a disaster if they don't start getting some points, some wins, and uh, I mean, there's a lot riding on on Mark Cavendish winning a stage in the Tour de France for Astana. It's got to have some effect. Oh, there's, the, the, I think the entire team, because if you look at the relegation, the points rankings for yeah. who's going to have in the years forward, who's going to have that world tour license. Yeah. That's, that's a different discussion. And we had that, what was it? A year and a half ago when many teams were on the chopping block and we're going to have the same discussion starting right now, because there's some teams that are going to be in some serious trouble looking forward here. If they don't start having some big wins here and not just with one rider, you need to really have a couple riders getting yeah, those points. Absolutely. So yeah, they know that's it's, you're not wrong, but I have a feeling that Mark might be, Exit stage left by that point in time. We we're having that conversation. If I saw us being uh, <laughs> yeah. in the world, one way or another, got to be the last season for Mark Cavendish. Yeah, you think? You think? I don't know. Every he been saying that for like five years too. So I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to say that either. <laughs> All right, <laughs> good point. All right, Christian, thanks a million. Um, Dauphiné, I think, is the next time we're doing some live bike racing. But between now and then, be on the podium on a regular basis. And I cannot wait to see how the the women's Vuelta turns out and the start of the Giro d'Italia. See how how uh, big of a lead Tade has in the first few stages of the Giro. It's going to be a great time. And we've transitioned now from the classic season, the early season, getting into the Grand Tour season. And uh, looking forward to a, a great summer of bike racing, that's for sure. And and maybe the beard will still be there in the Dauphiné, but what the biggest <laughs> the biggest question is, will it be there at the Tour de France? I mean, all, all the people is like ninety five percent told you to keep it for the Tour. I mean, there's if, no if that, way. If, if, if it, I'll tell you what, if NBC thinks it is if they say it's cool, would you keep it? I will not because the police won't let me into the country if I look like this. It's not going to happen. <laughs> All right, Grizzly Adams. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. See you, Bella. For all your cycling content year-round, subscribe to NBC Sports' YouTube page. We got it all.